Okay, then we are now here to talk about Devin Haney. As we know, this man has been getting a lot of stick from boxing fans, boxers themselves. And yes, we are now here to talk about what could be next in the career of Devin Haney. What are his next steps going to be? Um, I think a very interesting. Obviously, recently he was stripped off the WBC uh, super lightweight title. So where does Haney go from here? Because obviously uh, the Garcia fight was declared a no contest. Devin Haney ended up keeping the title. Well, first of all, because Garcia missed weight. So Garcia wasn't able to win the title. So Devin Haney kept the title. But, and then the fight was ruled a no contest. But now Haney's been stripped because, yeah, he's unable. It's looking like he's unable to defend. So Haney's been stripped. So now Alberto Pulo is now the number one in the WBC. Um, with Sandor Martin there as well. And Devin Haney's still up there. But um, it's an interesting one. What can happen next for Devin Haney? I think it's an interesting question. Does he, you know, go in for another world title fight straight away? Does he try and look for the Ryan Garcia fight? Is he taking that long out to try and get the fight? Who knows? I think he has said he doesn't want the fight, but I know. And I think in the past, he has also said he does want to redeem himself. So it's all a bit strange. Sometimes he wants it. Sometimes he doesn't. Um, does he fight a contender in the WBC? Does he go and fight Alberto Pulo? Does he fight Sandor Martin for a number one spot? I don't know. That's what we're talking about here today. So, yeah, obviously, um, I think some interesting options for Devin Haney are, I think one thing is he's not going to move up to welterweight. He's going to stay at super lightweight 100%. I don't see him moving. I mean, even though, you know, he kind of does at times look, pretty tight at the weight still he does he's kind of a weight bully if we're being honest but at the end of the day i think he, he's definitely going to stay at super lightweight he's not going to go to lightweight he simply just can't make the, uh, the weight anymore he's going to stay at super lightweight and try and do some business here who does he fight though is the interesting question do we see him against Liam Paro, I mean, Jose Venezuela, like, do we see him against him? I don't see him fighting Tiafimo Lopez. I very much doubt that will happen. It's looking like Jack Casserole or Arnold Barboza is going to be next for him. Uh, Alberto Pulo, it could be him for the title, or he could fight Sandor Martin. They're, they are possible options for Devin Haney. Other options for Haney could be, could the entertainer Jack Casserole fight? Um, I think it's an option. I do think it's an option, the possible Jack Catterall fight for Devin Haney. We also do need to remember, though, he it does look like he's kind of having a little bit of a falling out with Eddie Hearn. So it's looking even more unlikely. It's looking more difficult for Devin Haney to find fights. A fallout with Eddie Hearn now. Who knows what's going to be happening with him? I still believe he's got a contract with Eddie Hearn and Matt Troon, though. But... Who knows? They don't really look on the same page at the moment. Everything going on with at the AJ Dubois fight and all that between the two. Um, but yeah, gone though. I mean, he, he can't really, at the moment, Devin Haney can't really get anyone on side. I think he's finding it difficult to get promoters on his side. Uh, and, 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 and that's the thing. Um, which I think is going to hold Devin Haney up a bit as well, which is not good. It's going to be more difficult for him to, to be able to find the right fights for him and fights that really do make sense and fights that could easily be made. Um, yeah, I think Devin Haney needs to be back in March. I think he needs to be back in March 2025. If you leave it to April, you know, you've been out for a year. He's, you know, can't afford to waste his career, especially after, you know, no matter what people say or how much Devin Haney and Bill Haney try to erase it from history, they're not going to be able to. Haney needs to get right back in there. He, he needs to. He's taking too long off, in my opinion. He needs to try and get right back in there. February, March time, he needs a fight. But I feel like with, you know, all the politics and the promotions and stuff, he's making, I feel like Devin Haney's making life difficult for himself. And he's purposely trying to sit out for longer than he should be. When you get beat like that, no matter if the guy was on something or not, um, you know, I feel like you need to get back in there. You need to prove yourself. You need to stay active. Uh, with these kind of things. I feel like Haney's ruining his career a little bit here and he's just embarrassing himself on Twitter. But 
I mean, for Haney, could we see him up against Josh Taylor? I don't see that happening, but it's two guys who, you know, need to try and, you know, get back in and, and redeem their careers. Josh Taylor's coming off two back-to-back -back losses. Haney's coming off the, um, you know, brutal beating uh, against Ryan Garcia. So that could be one, but I don't see that being made for Devin Haney. Um, I don't see him getting Jose Valenzuela. I, I, I don't see that fight happening whatsoever. Um I, I think Haney versus Catrell could happen. I think it could if Catrell doesn't get a title shot, but Catrell deserves a shot at T.O. Um, I don't see Devin Haney, Lee, and Paro happening. I can't see those two ever clashing, to be honest with you. I don't see those two ever going on the same path as each other. Um, I feel like Haney... I mean, I feel like... It's difficult. I feel like he's a, I, Gary Russell could be one for Devin Haney. He's uh, number four in the WBC. That could be something. I feel like Haney needs to fight a contender in the WBC. That's that's what I think Haney needs to do. Try and fight a contender in the WBC. Um, that would be. I mean, Sandor Martin. I think is a very good comeback fight for Devin Haney. I, I think Sandor Martin's a very good comeback fight for Haney. Uh, Sando Mars is not going to go down without a fight, but I feel like he's someone that Haney can definitely outbox and win every round against with ease, to be fair. Sando Martin's obviously really going to go for him, probably get the obvious success, and you never know if he does crack Haney, what can happen, because Sando Martin has got a good punch on him, as we know, but um, I think Haney outboxes Sando Martin, so I think that's a very good comeback fight for Haney, and if Haney can beat Sando Martin, it 100% you know, gets him right back into a spot to fight for the title because it looks like Alberto Pulo, um, you know, is top of the division and will most likely get the next or, or be promoted to the actual champ. Uh, that's what that's what things are looking like right now for Pulo. Um, other than that, I mean, for Haney, could we see him up against Pitbull? Pitbull's coming off a loss. Um, as we know, Pitbull, a, a real big puncher, but I think that's definitely winnable for Haney. I think Haney can out, will be able to outbox Pitbull. But again, Pitbull's a big, big, big threat. So you never know. Pitbull really could push Haney to his absolute limits. But I think Haney can outskill him. I think Haney can outbox uh, Pitbull. But I feel, like, I feel like that kind of fight, Haney and Pitbull, could be very difficult to make, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, but it, it's a fight I'd like to see. It's 100% a fight I'd like to see. Uh, Mateus is fighting quite soon in the next week or so. So if Mateus gets through that, he's fighting on a smaller show, which Mateus should get through. Obviously, he, Mateus company is coming off that loss to Liam Paro. Mateus and Haney could be interesting. Mateus would have got himself back on track with a, with a win. Hopefully a knockout from him as well. Him and Haney could go at it. I mean, you know, look at what Paro was able to do to it. I think Paro could beat Haney. But again, Haney's a good, skilled, clever boxer with a good boxing IQ. I think Haney, Mateus could be interesting. Again, Mateus is there, you know, for a big, big, big shot. And it has got good killer instinct. But again, against Liam Paro, Paro was able to expose him quite a bit. So I feel like Haney, uh, I, I feel like Mateus could play into someone like Haney's game 100%. Um, I mean... I've always I've always thought Haney beats Mateus. I, I'll always have, and I still think he does. Uh, Mateus can win the fight. He can be explosive. He didn't show it against Paro when you know you're really getting that your jab in his face and can box well in the back foot and are a moving target, which Haney is. I think Haney can outbox Mateus, and it's a good name. It's a good uh, way to get back into the swing of things as well, 100%. But it's not an easy fight. So I think Haney could beat Mateus. I feel like that's a good fight. Uh, for Devin Haney, possibly. I feel like if Devin Haney beats anyone in the WBC, it, it you know puts him right up there and gives it gets him right back into a title shot. I feel like the best thing to do for Devin Haney right now, don't go in for a title shot next. Fight a contender, win that, and then later 2025, go for go for the title again. That's what I think Devin Haney should do next. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll speak to you on a bit.